Well, this is one of the most important things that we believe here at Grace Church, and it's one of the most important things that the church has believed over the last 2,000 years, and it's this, that God has existed eternally, forever and ever, God has existed eternally as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. And when I say the Trinity, I don't know how that registers in your mind. You may have heard that before, you may not have. But that word Trinity is really, it's like a smushing together of two different words or word parts. The first one is try, and try of course means three. So in some ways, God is three, he's three parts. And the second part is unity. And so unity means one or, or wholeness or fullness or completeness. And so in some way, God is one and he's united as one. And so God in, uh, as a trinity is three in one. You may be asking, well, what's three? What's the three part about God? And what's the one part about God? Well, God exists eternally as three different persons, which sounds a little bit weird, right? God exists eternally as three different persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So each one, each person of the Godhead has existed forever. And they exist as one essence. So three different persons, but one essence. Essence is another word for, for being or for what I am. Uh, a theologian that I deeply respect, a guy named Norman Geisler says it this way. He says, essence is what you are. And he says, uh, person is who you are. So essence is what you are, and person is who you are. And there's lots of different models, there's lots of, of different explanations that we use to explain the Trinity. And some of them are really good, and some of them are helpful, others of them are not so helpful. But all of them fall short in one way or another. Some of them explain the distinctives, the three distinct persons of the Godhead really, really well, but they struggle a little bit with the unity of the Godhead. Others explain the unity of the Godhead really, really well, but they struggle with the distinctiveness, the three distinct persons of the Godhead. The truth is, it's tough for us as human beings to wrap our mind around. There's a, there's a mystery to it, right? Because everyone, every, think about this, every person that we've experienced, even every creature that we've experienced in our existence is one person with one being who is created. That's what we experience, but God is different. God is three persons with one being, one essence, who has always been. He's not created, but he's eternally existed. And so there's, there's like some things that it makes me realize when I think about that, like who God is. The first thing is, just, he's super complex. You know, you think about the complexity of God, and he's tough for us to wrap our minds around. His ways are so far beyond our ways. In fact, the Bible talks about this. There's a passage in Isaiah 55 that says this. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. It's tough for us to understand who God is because he is so far beyond us. He is the infinite. He is the eternal. He is the complex. And we're not. We're created, right? And we're much simpler. So the first thought when I think about the Trinity and who God is, is I think, man, he's so complex. But in his complexity, and that, and that really leads me to humility, right? Because I realize that I am not complex the way that he is. I cannot understand who he is. That draws me to deep humility. But here's the cool thing. In his complexity, in his, in his sort of mystery that he is to us, he is also very knowable to us. He's made himself known to us. And not just known to us in sort of an impersonal, distant sort of way, but God calls himself our Father. I want you to think about that. He calls himself our King. You know, he's our ruler, he's the authority, he's our Lord, but he's also our Father. Think about your father in your life. Whether or not you had a great relationship with your dad or not, we all have the possibility of being able to know our fathers deeply and in personal ways and in intimate ways. And God allows us, even in his complexity, he allows us to know him in deeply personal, intimate ways. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. 
If you are interested in digging deeper into who God is, the one true God is, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I would encourage you to go online and check out the Athanasian Creed. We don't have time to get into it right now, but you can Google it, it'll come right up. The Athanasian Creed is a short little creed written hundreds of years ago that will give you a deeper understanding into who God is as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.